Okay, so we're looking at conditional probability in this video. Um, conditional probability is really handy because it allows you to make adjustments to the probability based on some given information, some known information ahead of time. Um, let me take an example here. If you were in a class and uh, you looked across the room and you know, just randomly pulled out a face in the room and you asked the probability that that person ends up getting an A in the class. Well, let's say you had read somewhere along the line that the professor tends to give about 10% of the students an A in the class. Then you're, without any other knowledge, you'd have to look at this student's face that you randomly chose from the class. You know, you'd have to just say basically, hey, you know, the probability that the person gets an A is about 10% because that's true of everyone in the class. If you don't know anything else about them, the probability that an individual will get an A is about 10% because that's the probability that a student gets an A in this professor's class. However, what if you instead had extra information? What if you were looking through um, like a resume or something, you look at the student and you know the students in the class, you pull a random resume out and you're thinking about the probability the person gets an A and you read in the resume that the student is an honor student, they have straight A's, you can see the transcripts and the transcripts are showing they took calculus one, two, and three and got A's in all those classes. Um, you can also see that uh, she lists that she studies 40 hours a week for um, her classes. So then you start to think, hmm, the probability that this student gets an A has got to be higher than the generic 10%, right? You might say, geez, the way she's studying, it's probably a 95% chance she gets an A, right? So you're making an adjustment in your guess, your assumption, because you have some known information ahead of time, and that alters the probability. Sometimes known information isn't helpful. There is some information that isn't very helpful. We'll talk about that later, but um, for example, if I said, you know, hey, that girl up in the top row of the class, what's the chance she gets an A? given that she wears a size 8 shoe. Well, I don't know that shoe size has anything to do with your ability to get an A in a stats class, so in that case the extra information isn't helpful and you might just stick with the original 10% guess, right? So we'll talk about that later in another area of probability where that becomes important. But for now, the idea of conditional probability is that we're going to make an adjustment to the probability based on some known information. Alright, so I have an example problem where this would come up. It says a survey revealed that 10% of companies have OSHA violations and 6% have OSHA violations and IRS tax violations. Find the probability that a randomly selected company has IRS tax violations given that they have OSHA violations. So OSHA means that they have a safety violation, so something about the job workforce area is not safe. And then the tax violation is obviously they're cheating on their taxes. So we're looking at this and we're saying to ourselves, you know, what's the probability that a company will have a tax violation given that they have this OSHA violation. So first thing I want to always start with is keywords. How do I know that this probability is dealing with um, conditional probability? Well, find the probability indicates there's a probability problem. I know that. That's fine. Then it says A randomly selected. Just one item being selected from the population. That's important. That has to be there for conditional probability. You're looking for it to just be one thing selected. Again, conditional probability is generally the structure is one major fraction, and so it's one item being selected. Then it goes on to say that the company has an IRX tax violation, and you have this important key phrase, given that. So whenever you see given that, or you have a statement that implies the same thing, like given that you know this is true, then you're dealing with conditional probability in all cases. So, let's put it together again, key phrases. Of course, find the probability has to be there. You have to be taking just one item, and then you have to have this phrase, given that, right? So if you're talking about just the basic um, conditional probability, you're looking for the phrase, find the probability, looking that they're taking just one item from the population, and you're looking for the idea that um, they have a phrase that implies there's some given information that you know ahead of time. So the phrase, given that, always jumps out. That's a good key phrase to have in the problem, or something that implies that same idea. So, okay. Now, once we have that, I want to talk about one more thing then. When you read this problem, the idea that the company has an IRS tax violation, that part is kind of in question, right? We're saying, what's the probability they have a tax violation? So it's not a certainty that they're going to have this tax violation. It's a question mark. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. We're looking for the probability that they have this tax violation. But the given that information is not a question mark. We're assuming that this is known to be true. We're assuming that this is in fact correct, that it is known, that it is understood, that it's assumed to be true of the company we select. So no matter which company we end up selecting, we know that they will have safety violations through OSHA. Okay, so that's the key thing. Whatever follows the given that condition is assumed to be true, it's assumed to be known. Okay, 
So I'm going to need a little space to work out the problem. So you might want to take a moment to pause the video, copy down the problem. Okay, so continuing with conditional probability, we want to first talk about the formula involved in the process. So if you're doing conditional rule of probability, you're going to be working with this formula. The probability that A occurs given that B has occurred. So this symbol here stands for the phrase given that. That symbol represents um, uh, just a notation for us. It's not a fraction bar, it's a straight up and down bar that expresses the idea of given that, right? And so the way this is read is it's a probability of A given that B has occurred, or the probability that A occurs given that B has already occurred, or the probability that A occurs given that B is known to be true, something like that. So the idea is that B is the known information and A is the one we're asking about. We're saying, what's the probability that A occurs given that B has happened? Okay, now the formula from there breaks down into a couple of probabilities divided. The first one is going to be the probability of A and B. And the second one in the denominator is the one here, so we're going to have probability of B. And so that becomes our formula. The probability that A and B occur at the same time divided by the probability of B. Now, this word end is often replaced in the formula, and they use an intersection symbol, which means the same thing. And so what that means is the probability that A intersect B happens. A intersect B is another way to say that A and B happen at the same time. It's just set theory notation, right? Okay, so there we have it. There's the structure of the conditional probability rule. We want to take that structure and apply it to the problem we were working on before. So let's go back to that problem and look at what they gave us as information. In that problem, they said that 10% of the companies involved in the survey had OSHA violations. 10% had OSHA violations. The other number they gave us in the problem was that 6% of the companies had both IRS tax violations and OSHA violations. So that was given information in the problem, that 6% of the companies involved had both types of violations. So they cheated on their taxes and they had these OSHA violations. Okay, fine. From that point then, what we want to do is fill out this formula. The probability that somebody has an IRS tax violation given that they have an OSHA violation. So you go to a company, you know the company has an OSHA violation, what's the chance that they're also cheating on their taxes? That's the question we're asking, right? Well, if you're using the formula that we just talked about, you're going to put these two categories together. You're going to do the probability of having a tax and OSHA violation over the probability that they have just an OSHA violation. Okay, so those are the two categories there listed and divided here. Alright, so the question is, do we have this information? Well, I think we do, right? The probability that a company has a tax and OSHA violation can be estimated by this number, right? 6% of the surveyed companies had both types of violations. So that number on top should be 6%. So we should be able to say 6% had tax and OSHA violations. On the bottom, we have the probability of an OSHA violation. That's here. That number turns out to be 10%, right? Probability of an OSHA violation, 10%. Okay, just cancel those two and you end up with 0 0.60, or in other words, 60%. What this is indicating to us is that if you go to a company, say you're an IRS agent and you want to look to see if a company is cheating on their taxes, if you happen to notice that that company ha also has OSHA safety violations, there's a 60% chance that they will also be cheating on their taxes at the same time. So there's clearly a connection between these two things. Maybe companies that are willing to um, short the safety regulations would also be willing to cheat on their taxes, right? So if you're willing to cheat at safety, you might cheat also on your taxes.